Gunsmoke is an American radio and television western drama series created by director Norman MacDonald and writer John Meston. The stories take place in and around Dodge City, Kansas, during the settlement of the American West. The central character is lawman Marshall Matt Dillon, played by William Conrad on radio and James Arness on television. When aired in the UK, the television series was initially titled Gun Law, later reverting to Gunsmoke. The radio series ran from 1952 to 1961. John Dunning wrote that among radio drama enthusiasts, Gunsmoke is routinely placed among the best shows of any kind and any time. The television series ran for 20 seasons from 1955 to 1975, and stands as the United States' longest-running prime-time live-action drama with 635 episodes. In 2010, Law & Order tied Gunsmoke for most seasons for a live-action drama series when it finished its 20th and final season. But the show finished 179 episodes short of Gunsmoke's final total in terms of primetime scripted series with continuing characters. The Simpsons is the only program to exceed 20 seasons. At the end of its run in 1975, Los Angeles Times columnist Cecil Smith wrote, Gunsmoke was the dramatization of the American epic legend of the West. Our own Iliad and Odyssey, created from standard elements of the dime novel and the pulp western as romanticized by Ned, Buntline, Brett, Hart, and Mark Twain. It was ever the stuff of legend, radio series. In the late 1940s, CBS chairman William S. Paley, a fan of the Philip Marlowe radio serial, asked his programming chief, Hub L. Robinson, to develop a hard-boiled western series. A show about a Philip Marlowe of the Old West. Robinson instructed his West Coast CBS vice president, Harry Ackerman, who had developed the Philip Marlowe series, to take on the task. Ackerman and his scriptwriters, Mort Fine and David Friedkin, created an audition script called Mark Dillon Goes to Gaujai, based on one of their Michael Shane radio scripts, The Crooked Wheel. Two auditions were created in 1949. The first was very much like a hard-boiled detective series and starred Michael Ryers Dillon. The second starred straight Harrow actor Howard Culver, in a more western, lighter version of the same script. CBS liked the Culver version better, and Ackerman was told to proceed. But there was a complication. Culver's contract as the star of Straight Arrow would not allow him to do another Western series. The project was shelved for three years. When producer Norman MacDonald and writer John Meston discovered it creating an adult Western series of their own, MacDonald and Meston wanted to create a radio Western for adults. In contrast to the prevailing juvenile fare such as The Lone Ranger and The Cisco Kid, Gunsmoke was set in Dodge City, Kansas, during the thriving cattle days of the 1870s. Dunning notes, The show drew critical acclaim for unprecedented realism. Radio cast and character biographies The radio series first aired on CBS on April 26. 1952 with the episode Billy the Kid, written by Walter Newman, and ended on June 18, 1961. The show stars William Conrad as Marshall Matt Dillon, Howard McNear as Doc Charles Adams, Georgia Ellis as Kitty Russell, and Parley Bear as Dillon's assistant Chester Wesley Proudfoot. Matt Dillon very early episodes in the archives reveal two episodes with Marshall Mark Dillon as the lead, not yet played by Conrad. Conrad was one of the last actors to audition for the role of Marshall Dillon. With a resonantly powerful and distinctive voice, Conrad was already one of radio's busiest actors. Though Meston championed him, MacDonald thought Conrad might be overexposed. During his audition, however, Conrad won over MacDonald after reading only a few lines. Dylan as portrayed by Conrad was a lowly, isolated man, toughened by a hard life. MacDonald later claimed, 
Much of Matt Dillon's character grew out of Bill Conrad. Meston relished the upending of cherished Western fiction cliches and felt that few Westerns gave any inkling of how brutal the Old West was in reality. Many episodes were based on man's cruelty to man and woman, inasmuch as the prairie woman's life and the painful treatment of women as chattels were touched on well ahead of their time in most media. As originally pitched to CBS executives, this was to be an adult western, not a grown-up hop along Cassidy. Dunning writes that Meston was especially disgusted by the archetypal western hero and set out to destroy that type of character he loathed. In Meston's view, Dylan was almost as scarred as the homicidal psychopaths who drifted into Dodge from all directions. Chester Chester's character had no surname, until Bear ad-libbed, proud foot, during an early rehearsal. Initial Gunsmoke scripts gave him no name at all, his lines were simply slugged to be spoken by, Townsman. Again Conrad's sense of what the program would be supervened, and Chester was born. The amiable Waco expatriate was usually described as Dylan's assistant, but in the December 13, 1952, episode, Post Martin, Dylan described Chester as Dylan's deputy. Contradicting this description, in the July 5, 1954 episode, Hank Prine, Dylan corrects a prisoner who describes Chester as his deputy, stating, Chester is not my deputy. Though they both agree Chester acts like he is. Whatever his title, Chester was Dylan's foil, friend, partner, and in an episode in which Chester nearly dies, Dylan allows that Chester was the only person he could trust. The TV series changed the newly limping Chester's last name from Proudfoot to Good. Doc Adams Doc Adams was, at first, a grumpy and somewhat dark character, but McNear's performances steadily became more warm-hearted. Doc Adams' a backstory evokes a varied and experienced life. In some episodes, he had educational ties to Philadelphia. In others, he spent time as ship's doctor aboard the gambling boats that plied the Mississippi River, which provided a background for his knowledge of New Orleans. In the January 31, 1953, episode Cavalcade, a fuller history is offered, even though subsequent programs kept close listeners' heads spinning. In Cavalcade, his real name is Calvin Moore, educated in Boston, and he practiced as a doctor for a year in Richmond, Virginia, where he fell in love with a beautiful young woman who was also being courted by a wealthy young man named Roger Beauregard. Beauregard forced Doc into fighting a duel with him, resulting in Beauregard's being shot and killed. Even though it was a fair duel, because Doc was a Yankee and an outsider he was forced to flee. The young woman fled after him and they were married in Saint Louis, but two months later she died of typhus. Doc wandered throughout the territories until he settled in Dodge City 17 years later under the name of Charles Adams. The Adams moniker was another Conrad invention, borrowing the surname from cartoonist Charles Adams as a testament to Doc's occasionally ghoulish comportment. Miss Kitty Georgia Ellis first appeared in the radio episode Billy the Kid as Francia Richards, a former girlfriend of Matt Dillon and the widow of a criminal. Miss Kitty did not appear until the May 10, 1952 episode Jalisco. Kitty's profession was hinted at but never explicit. In a 1953 interview with Time, McDonnell declared, Kitty is just someone Matt has to visit every once in a while. An outtake from the program makes this hilariously obvious. The television show first portrayed Kitty as a saloon employee then later as the owner of the Long Branch Saloon. Sometime in 1959, Ellis was billed as Georgia Hawkins instead of Georgia Ellis. Distinction from other Radio Westerns Gunsmoke was often a somber program, particularly in its early years. Dunning writes that Dylan played his hand and often lost. He arrived too late to prevent a lynching. 
he amputated a dying man's leg and lost the patient anyway. He saved a girl from brutal rapists then found himself unable to offer her what she needed to stop her from moving into life as a prostitute. Some listeners, such as Dunning, argue the radio version was more realistic. Episodes were aimed at adults and featured some of the most explicit content of their time, including violent crimes, scalpings, massacres, and opium addicts. Many episodes ended on a somber note, and villains often got away with their crimes. Nonetheless, thanks to the subtle scripts and outstanding ensemble cast over the years the program evolved into a warm, often humorous celebration of human nature. Apart from the doleful tone, Gunsmoke was distinct from other radio westerns, as the dialogue was often slow and halting, and due to the outstanding sound effects, listeners had a nearly palpable sense of the prairie where the show was set. The effects were subtle but multi-layered, giving the show a spacious feel. John Dunning wrote, The listener heard extraneous dialogue in the background, just above the muted shouts of kids playing in an alley. He heard noises from the next block, too, where the inevitable dog was barking. Gunsmoke was also unique from other westerns in that it was unsponsored for the first few years of production. The program got its support from CBS for the first two years. Series producers felt that if the show was sponsored they would have to clean the show up. The show wanted to find a sponsor that would allow it to keep the show the way it was. Talk of adapting Gunsmoke to television not long after the radio show began, there was talk of adapting it to television. Privately, McDonnell had a guarded interest in taking the show to television, but publicly, he declared that our show is perfect for radio, and he feared that, as Dunning writes, Gunsmoke confined by a picture could not possibly be as authentic or attentive to detail. In the end, wrote Dunning, CBS simply took it away from McDonnell and began preparing for the television version. Conrad and the others were given auditions, but they were little more than token efforts, especially in Conrad's case, due to his obesity. However, Meston was kept as the main writer. In the early years, a majority of the TV episodes were adapted from the radio scripts, often using identical scenes and dialogue. Dunning wrote that radio fans considered the TV show a sham and its players imposters should surprise no one. That the TV show was not a sham is due in no small part to the continued strength of Meston's scripts. McDonnell and Meston continued the radio version of Gunsmoke until 1961, making it one of the most enduring vintage radio dramas. Conrad directed two television episodes, in 1963 and 1971, while McNair appeared on six, playing characters other than Doc, including three times as storekeeper Howard Rudd.